my name is Victoria. I'm Kaylee. I'm Alex. And today we're going to be going over um, what to expect during an OSCE. So normally um, you're going to have two students, you're going to be partners, and we would normally both be in PD clothing. Today we're just going to demonstrate on Alex, so he's in his PD clothing today, but on an actual OSCE day and during PD lab, both you and your partner would be in your PD uniform, which Alex is wearing here. You will have a proctor in here with you who is going to be answering as if they were the patients. That's what I will be today. Um, Kaylee will be the PA and Alex will be our patient. And then just a few other things for you to know, you will be allowed to have a piece of paper just to take some notes while you're doing your history taking portion of the exam. And then you're also allowed to use your Sanford guide for treatments and you can use your cell phone with your medical apps such as Medscape and UpToDate to look up any um, diagnoses, workups, um, and further treatment. Okay, so once she's settled and walked through the door completely, we would sit down and then I would give her her scenario, her chief complaint, and her vitals. And this is something that as a student, you have no idea essentially what you're walking into until you receive that information. And then from there, you have to form your differential diagnosis before you even do anything else. That is the first step. On the day of the OSCE, you and your partner will come in the room and you will meet with the proctor. <laughs> and one of the students will go first, depending on who's on the schedule. And the proctor will give the prompt with a little bit of the description and then also the vitals for each case. Okay, so this is the physical diagnosis OSCE. You have 30 minutes to elicit a focused history, perform a focused physical exam, formulate a problem list, differential, and final diagnosis. You are also asked to determine appropriate workup, treatment, and follow-up using an online or app resources. At the conclusion of the OSCE, you will be given an oral case presentation. Remember that you will be evaluated on performance of each skill. You will be given the results of a specific skill after it has been completed. Do not assume that any skill is deferred unless I tell you specifically what is deferred. I will not be able to answer any questions after you have begun the exam. Do you have any questions now? Okay. A seven-year-old male patient presents to your family practice office complaining of a rash. He's accompanied by his father. The vital signs are temperature, 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit, pulse, 98 and regular, Respirations 18, non labored Blood pressure 102 over 68. Height 122 centimeters. And weight 23.2 kilograms. Okay, and based on that chief complaint, just a few differential diagnoses. Um, we're going to go with chickenpox, um, upper respiratory infection, and allergic dermatitis. Okay. Awesome, and note that during this time for your differential diagnoses, you have to have at least two. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hello, my name is Kaylee LeBourne. I'm a physician assistant student. I'm gonna be taking care of you today. What brings you in today? I have a rash. Okay, and what does that rash look like? Red and blistery. And does it hurt at all or does it itch? It itches. Does it bleed or is there any discharge coming out of it? Um, no, not that I know. And where is this rash located? It's on my chest and back mostly. And when did you notice that this rash started? I just noticed it this morning actually. And you said it's just on your chest and back. You haven't noticed it spreading anywhere else. Um, yes, actually, it seems to be start spreading onto my face. Has this affected your daily life at all? Um, not really, it's just kind of uncomfortable. And has the rash changed at all since it first started? No. Is there anything that you can think of that might have brought this rash on, like any new soaps? Um, any perfumes, any lotions, or have you been camping out in the woods, anything like that? No camping, no new soaps, lotions, or mess, anything like that. Okay. Have you tried anything to make the rash better? Um, no, I haven't actually. And is there anything that you've noticed that makes the rash worse? 
No, not that I've noticed. And are there any other symptoms that you can think of that are going along with this rash? He kind of feels warm, but I didn't check his temperature as his father. So okay. he came in with his father. Okay, so we think he might have a fever, but we didn't actually get to check the temperature at home, that's correct? Correct. Okay, and has he been sick at all recently with like a cough or a sore throat? He hasn't, but his five-year-old sister actually has a sore throat, okay. but no rash. I'm not aware of anyone else. No one else in the family is sick or any of his friends sick? No, I'm not aware of anyone else, just his sister. Any shortness of breath? No. Any nausea or vomiting? No. Any recent weight gain or weight loss? No. Right, I'm just going to ask you a few more questions here. Sure. Um, any past medical history that we should be aware of? No. Not that I'm aware of. Occasional colds and earaches, but other than that, no. Any past surgeries or hospitalizations? No. And as far as family history goes, mom and dad are healthy, sister's healthy, anything significant that we should know about, like any heart issues, hypertension, diabetes in the family? No. Are we allergic to anything? No allergies. Any daily medications? No. Are we up to date on immunizations? We do not believe in vaccinations. As far as school, is he homeschooled? Does he go to a public school? He's in second grade, but since he got the rash, he had to stay home. He has one sister who's five, and they live with both of the parents. Uh, no smoking in the house and no pets. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wash my hands prior to getting this physical exam started. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna have you take off your shirt, socks, and shoes for me for proper visualization. So I just washed my hands, I've got my gloves on. As I'm approaching my patient, what is my general appearance of the patient? Your patient is alert, somewhat shy and reserved, in no acute distress, and does not appear ill. Okay, take a look in your ear real quick, so you're gonna tell me here. Okay, you can defer the other side. The ears are normal. Put your head back for me real quick. I'm just put this in here. Your nasal exam is normal as well. Okay. And I'm just gonna have you look forward for me, just keep staring straight. It's gonna have pupils. That exam is also normal. Alright, I'm just gonna grab my thumb depressor here, open wide, say ah, uh, ah. Uh. The posterior pharynx is erythematous, but the remainder of your ENT exam is normal. All right, and you're just gonna feel me touching you real quick. I'm feeling for any lung adenopathy. There's no lymphadenopathy noted. Can you just take a few seconds for me? Good. I'm going to go ahead and take a listen to your heart real quick. Just breathe normally. Regular rate and rhythm, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. Okay, I'm just going to listen to your lungs real quick. I'm going to have you breathe through your mouth for me.
Mom feels are clear, but show me how you would do this three. Mm -hmm. Just gonna have you cross your arms in front of you and keep breathing through your mouth. You're gonna have your leg back for me. I'm gonna pull this up so you can put your feet on. And just bend your knees for me. And you're gonna feel my stethoscope on your stomach. It's gonna be a little cold. Non-tender, non-distended, no organomegaly, bowel sounds are present throughout. Okay. I'm going to put this back in and you can go ahead and sit up again. I'm going to be taking a closer look at the skin now. I do want to take a closer look at that rash, so I know we have some on the chest. I'm just going to look for any spreading of that rash. Looking at the back as well, back of his head, the ears. What am I visualizing when I see that rash? Numerous erythematous and vesicular lesions in clusters with a teardrop appearance, noted on the back, the chest, and a few behind both ears. Excoriation noted, indicating that the patient has been scratching them. Okay. And this is the picture of what it looks like. And that is going to conclude my physical exam. Okay. So at this point in time, I would like you to formulate your problem list. So go back to your notes. I can repeat any physical exam findings if you need, but you're not allowed to write during the physical, which yeah, you didn't do, so that's great. Okay, so for our problem list, we have a seven-year-old male. He is not immunized. He has a viral xanthum. Um, he has a fever. He has a sore throat, and for my diagnosis, based on my clinical findings, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is chickenpox. Okay. And at this point, you can start your workup, okay. and you're allowed to use your uh, medical phone applications such as Medscape, UpToDate, Apophrates, or your Sanford guide. Okay. So you've got to do that. I'm going to take my phone out and open up Medscape. I'm going to stick to my diagnosis of chickenpox. This is going to be a clinically made diagnosis. What we could do is ink smear to confirm our diagnosis. For treatment, since this is viral, there's no antibiotics that we can give. It's going to be self-limiting and we're going to do supportive treatment. So we can do oatmeal baths to help with the itching. Um, we can also do calamine motion. And then I do want to stress to the patient's family that um, since they do not believe in immunizations and little sisters at home with a sore throat, that um, this is a highly communicable disease. So it's very contagious. Um, it's going to be contagious until the last um, little vesicle has ruptured and then crusted over. So we need to keep those kids with anybody else who doesn't have immunizations until this is over. So as long as they are getting better, I'm not going to see them back for a follow-up, but if they're getting worse, then I'd like to see them back in two to three weeks. Okay. Okay. It's time for your oral case presentation. So collect yourself, maybe read over what you've written, and whenever you're ready, you have the floor. Sounds good. So we have a seven-year-old male. He is presenting to the office with a chief complaint of a rash since this morning. There is nobody around him that has a rash like this, but we did note that his sister is at home and has a sore throat. Um, he noticed that it was first starting on his chest and his back, but it is now spreading to his face. There's no bleeding or discharge, but it is itchy. Um, Dad said that at home he felt warm, but they didn't actually check the temperature. He does not have any significant past medical history, but he is not immunized. No exposure to any new perfumes or detergents. 
um, no recent camping or exposure to the woods or any plants. Upon assessment at our office, he was found to have a temperature of 102, heart rate 98, respirations 18, blood pressure is 102 over 68, um, height 122 centimeters, weight 22.3 kilograms. Upon inspection of the rash, he was noted to have um, a vesicular rash on his chest, his back, spreading up to his face. It has a vesicular appearance like a dewdrop on a rose petal. Based on our findings, we are diagnosing him with chicken pox. We can do a zinc smear to confirm. We are going to do some supportive treatment, so calamine lotion and oatmeal baths, um, and then we're gonna educate the patient's family that this is a self-limiting disease, it's viral, so there are no antibiotics, and that this is highly contagious, so it's, we need to get little sister checked out, see if she has it as well, and um, just keep distance until this is over. And we're not gonna follow up with them as long as they do improve, but if they're getting worse, we're gonna see them back in two to three weeks. Awesome. Okay. So the OSCE has officially ended. Um, and at this point in time, your proctor would give you feedback about your oral case presentation. Um, and then the last point in the OSCE is that they were acting professional. So that's something you don't have to verbalize during OSCEs, but it's just noted for at the end. Usually the proctor that you have will also talk to you about the disease a little bit more and just kind of like what they've noticed throughout the OSCE. So here's just more information on the process of an OSCE and tips that we have for you guys. So this is the Sanford guide. It has all the bacteria and stuff. So we didn't use that in this case because we had a viral cause, but if it were a bacterial cause, we would open that up and you're able to use that when you're working on the workup and diagnosis, right? Yeah. Always use Sanford as your treatment for antimicrobials. Don't rely on your apps for that. You can use the apps for you know your extra workups um, and then additional treatments, but Sanford guide is gonna be your mainstay for the antimicrobials. Another thing we wanted to point out, um, notice how even though we had a rash in our scenario, we did still do a pretty extensive examination, so a good rule of thumb is to do the system above and the system below where the chief complaint is. With something like a rash that's kind of hard to determine, but since you're thinking it could be viral, definitely check you know, heat, abdomen, and always listen to heart and lungs. Yes, and then checking the skin too. Don't forget to use inspecting to your advantage because that's something that you wouldn't necessarily vocalize, but you're inspecting, you know, all the time. So that's just important to realize that you can use that. And also you're basically using all of your skills from last semester. So there's nothing necessarily new being taught. So you kind of have to recall a bunch of things from last semester. So make sure to review that before your OSCEs. And uh, notice that she brought in her stethoscope. That's the one piece of equipment plus a clipboard that you will need to bring to every OSCE. <laughs> so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us or reach out to your buddy. Uh, they'll be very helpful with any help you need and thank you for watching.